Hey, we are back. Guess we're not back. We really haven't gone anywhere. Uh, we're just starting out. But hey, this is a war crime show, and uh, we're starting a new project today. So if you remember last time, we were working on the fabulous shadow box, and we uh, we just put yet another coat of shellac on it because it needed a good shellacking. But yeah, that's uh, that's the previous project. We're just uh, in the process of getting that finished. And am I getting audio? Yeah, I'm getting audio. Okay, groovy. And because we ran out of time, last episode, we also busted out the saw set, and we busted out the files, and we sharpened our cross-cut saw because it needed some sharpening. But today, I'm going to start out by uh, first saying hello to Mr. School Bus. Bringing all the children home from their hard day of learning. To which I say, try college level algebra. Because I am not impressed by your elementary schoolness. So we're going to clean up the shop a little bit, get some things off of our bench so we have some room to work. Don't know why this rag is here. Get the trash can a bit closer. Random scraps, we will keep a few of those on the bench with which to be random and scrappy because those are always helpful. I don't need my calipers yet. Uh, marking knife, keep you around. Other marking knife will keep you too. That pencil can stay, that pencil can stay, this dowel can stay, screwdriver you stay, this screwdriver, we don't need that many screwdrivers do we? No, I don't think so. Don't need a saw set, because we're not sharpening a saw today. Speed square. It is a rare day when I need a speed square. Okay. Strap will keep out. Sandpaper will put you to the side. Now let's see what we can brush off the bench. Yep, next workbench is definitely going to be bigger. I'm thinking maybe... ...30 to 36 inches maybe. Deep. Maybe another, uh, we're about five feet long here I think. Maybe bring that to six feet long. Maybe a tool well. I'm still not decided on whether or not I would like a tool well. I have no idea why I have matches out here. All right. So I've got a broom somewhere too. There we go. Get some of these shavings off the floor. Or at least on the part of the floor where I'm walking, I can put them on a different part of the floor and they should be fine over there and not bother me. interlocking floor mats which seemed like a really great idea especially because they were free and once you try and take a broom to them you'll see that they're not quite as uh, valuable as you may have once considered they're difficult to sweep 
and also really difficult to vacuum. So if you're one of those folks who uses a vacuum from time to time, they will thwart your efforts. All right. There we go, that'll be easier to clean up later. So, let's, uh, let's try and get set up here. Maybe get a little bit laid out. So I've got a piece of quarter inch birch plywood. And this is gonna serve as the backing for my saw till. So let's, uh, let's bring you in closer. So this will be the backing. And I'm gonna have a saw. And I'm gonna have another saw. And yet another saw. So these are the three longest saws, so this one's probably going to be the longest, so we'll just base everything off of here for now. And I can put you back up, I guess. So the plan is kind of to have um, a dowel See, where's my dowel? Had it. Like, not very long ago at all. Losing my head. Dowel, 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 where did you go? Ah, there we go, it's on the rack. So the saw is going to rest teeth in and there's going to be a, a piece of wood up here with a groove cut in it, so kind of like this. So if we can just imagine, let's uh, so a kerf in there and the teeth are going to rest in the kerf and this is going to rest like so. So um, Uh, this is going to have to be a bit taller than I actually expected, or a bit more protruded from the wall than I expected. All right, that's okay. We can adjust. We can adjust. That's fine. Um, and I'm going to use my uh, leftover oak. So we're going to have a bit of red oak. So I want to do a base. I probably do want to do a base. As I'm all about that base, no trouble. And I was going to have some walls, but these walls are not going to be adequate to contain that dowel, as I had hoped. So, what I will need to do is... Okay. First and foremost, I need to figure out, yeah, I'm going to have to do something like this where it protrudes a bit from the base. Um, so it's going to come up this way and maybe mortise and tenon that in and then a side piece to give it structural stability a top and a plate going across for the saw plate to fit in. And I hope this is making some semblance of sense because uh, I might just be making up words. It's hard to tell. And it might be helpful if I actually had some kind of plan but that takes half the fun out of this. Not all the fun, just half the fun. Um, but we are going to make do with what we get going on here. Uh, so let's see. 
I believe, first and foremost, what I think I want to do is uh, create these sides, which are going to contain our dowel, for which the base of the saw handles are going to rest upon. So let's do that. Backing. Well, backing we're not so concerned about right now. Um, okay, you know what? Let's, let's do a couple of things. Let's do a couple of things. So, got to have a place for my saw handle to rest, right? And that means like that, which means I never have a tape measure when I need it. Okay. Go there, at least out to where my thumb is. Okay. Something like that. So, pencil, mark my thumb. Tape measure. Where's my tape measure? Come on, any tape measure. Any tape measure will do. How am I always losing my tape measures? I've got like 50 of these things. <sighs> Just long enough? Eh, close enough. 12 inches. We'll call it 12 inches. So we're doing... I'm not have a scrap of wood. Okay, I need to get a little bit more organized. Let me be right back. I'm going to grab a notepad and a pencil. All right, so let's uh, bring you in a little bit closer. Maybe, and down. Okay, so I did pay no attention to these numbers. I have no idea what they're for. Uh, I found my tape measure, so that's good. We've got a pencil, we've got paper to work with. So we're gonna have, from the side, this is going to come out 12 inches. That's going to come up and it probably makes more sense to do the mortise in the bottom piece. So 12, so well, erase that. Then we'll just do 12 inches here. 12 inches. And We'll have the tenon in the vertical piece. And this vertical piece needs to be at least long enough to contain the saw. So I'm gonna call this, let's, uh, let's make it an even 36 inches. So that will give us more than enough room. And so 36 and this guy is width is uh, five and a half. So five and a half. Which means this is going to be 31 and a half inches. All right, we are making progress. So that's the side view and my drawing is atrocious. I know it, and now you know it. 
Soon the whole world will know it. All right, so. For this, I need to have some room on either side of the saw. And so we're going to call this uh, three and a half inches. So three and a half inches total. So that's uh, what was that? It's got to be, you know, let's just make it two inches from the side of each saw. So from there's the dowel. There's one wall, so we're gonna index this over two inches. And the saw itself is just, just an inch wide, so we're gonna have a saw, and then we're gonna have a two inch gap. So, I've got three panel saws. Okay, so we're gonna do, so, three inches per saw, plus two inches. Okay. And so I got uh, three panel saws, so that's three, and then three back saws, so that's six total. Um, I'm going to leave in the possibility of another two saws, so that's eight saws, grand total, so eight times three is gonna leave me with 24 inches, so a total of 26 inches from side to side. All right, we are making some progress. Um, let's see if we have enough lumber. Okay, so, I need two pieces of 12, two times 12, and those should be five and a half, and I need two pieces of 31 and a half, two times 31, five and then I need two pieces of 26 inches and I'm gonna have to leave some room for joinery on those Ooh, wait okay so with the, the pieces that are coming say across the bottom I think I actually want to do the tenons on those. So instead of doing 35 and a half, these are going to be changed to two times 36, right? And the 12 and a half, I'm gonna subtract five and a half inches, so these are going to be uh, 6.5. And then I'm gonna to need to add, Let's call it an inch and a half for tenons plus uh, 1.5 for the tenons. And that should wedge it in there pretty nice. Let's do, uh, let's try some drawboard tenons too if we can. Because I like those. Those are pretty. Okay. And the 36, that's more than enough room, so we're going to leave it at that. Um, but for the 26 inch base, uh, our wood is three quarter. Yeah, three quarter.
So it needs to be 26, 26 plus um, two times three quarter is six quarter is, that's uh, one and a half inches. So it needs to be 27.5 on the base and the piece on the top. And the piece on the top is just kind of hold it all together. So it's going to end up looking kind of like just a uh, from the front one big box and some saws and some little saws and some space in between in case we want to buy some more saws. But uh, that's neither here nor there. In fact, we might even be able to at some point do a double decker so we can have more saws up here, a little tendon saws. Um, yeah. So let's uh, let's add this up. Twenty-seven and a half times uh, twenty-seven and a half plus twenty-seven and a half. We're gonna have fifteen. So that's fifty-five inches. Plus two times thirty-six. It's uh, twelve. Carry the one. That's seventy-two. And then we need the top and then we need the two five and a half plus or six and a half plus one and a half, that's going to be eight. So we're gonna do sixteen. We need five, six, seven, plus six is thirteen. Five plus seven plus one plus one is hundred and forty-three inches grand total is the amount of linear feet or linear inches we need. 143. And I've got 108 here. 108 plus 36 and a half. That's not enough nut lumber. We're, uh, we're a few inches short. Which means I might have to dip into uh, something that's not red oak. What have I got that's not red oak? I got some pine that might be suitable. Don't really want to use my cherry or my maple, but uh, maple if I have to, I suppose. All right. Let's uh, let's start with what we can start with. Put you aside for now. Definitely don't want to use my walnut for this. Don't think I want to use my cherry. Save the cherry for something special. All right. So, what have we got here? Let's, uh, you should be square. It looks like I've, I've cut off both ends, so that's pretty dang square. And we said we're doing eight inches. Hold fast, get you clamped in place. Get a good knife wall in here to guide our saw.
I'm pretty sure this chisel's due for some sharpening. And that's a crosscut saw. We like that one. Well, you know what? Let's, uh, let's go ahead and also maybe scratch a line down the edge just to give us something to follow. Since we had that practice last time uh, sharpening the, the crosscut panel saw, this is a crosscut carcass saw. And I'm tempted a little bit to uh, go back and revisit this one, which I sharpened a couple months ago. But I don't think I did a very good job of it. It cuts better than it did, it's just not pretty. I think it could be better. All right, we're catching a little bit. Let's get some oil on here. Stay put, you. Not done cutting yet. All right, that's one. And to transfer this over, we're just gonna hold the line or hold the um, hold the knife right there. Nice little. Nick in the corner and bring in our square. Be very careful with the placement of your fingers because this is the best time to cut them, which means that it's a uh, it's never actually a good time to cut your fingers. That is a time where it's very possible to cut your fingers. And nobody wants that. And if you do, you, this probably isn't the show for you. for the saw, which it looks like a two. Oh, forgot my, uh, my vertical. Those are kind of important. Just to let me know that I'm cutting in the correct direction.
Some days I think I just need bigger holdfasts. Or perhaps more of them. Now these are, um, short little, what is this, maybe a 10 inch shank. Not even. Eight and a, eight and a quarter inch shank. Hold fast, it's uh, made in China. Not made in Taiwan, pardon me. Taiwan is different than China. Except don't tell the Chinese. But those are from uh, Woodcraft. And they're not my favorite things in the world, but uh, they do the trick. I think maybe I would like to um, get some nicer ones. But at the time of the purchase, I wasn't really sure what diameter shank I was looking for for the hold fast. Those are three quarter. I also got uh, this monster here, which is about a five eighths shank, which is ridiculous. But the size of it, the mass of it, and the, uh, the reach of it is, is kind of nice. So I'd like maybe something in between, um, just so I can have a consistent uh, pattern of holes on my bench. One that works for these dogs, or you know whatever other dogs I might get. And I think three quarter inch is probably the best bet overall. And so someday I may end up uh, looking at the Lee Nielsen um, hold fast that they have for offer. Those look pretty nice, and it's a trusted brand, so you know that's uh, it's got that going for it. I'm trying to figure out what I'm looking for here. Oh yeah. Shooting board. I don't know why I'm taking this to the shooting board because I don't think these are actually all that square to begin with. But maybe a little bit more square. are my uh, protruding struts. What am I going to call these? The um, Let's call them nothing. Let's just set them aside and go look at something else. So the next thing I'm needing, I don't think this is going to be the necessary note. I got uh, 20 and a half inches there. So not, not even remotely close to what I would need. Because I need, uh, what, 27 and a half inches for the, the base and the top? So that won't work. Hmm. And this is why you take inventory of your stock before you start a project. Not, uh, not try and base your project on what you have in stock. Uh, oh well. We live, we learn, right? No, no, we never learn. Who am I kidding? I'm going to do the same thing next time. Mm.
but at least I've got the proper tools. All right, what else do I got? What else do I got? Um, let's uh, let's go ahead and do. The sides. So you, from setting aside, got no more use for you. And maple. Yeah, I've definitely got enough maple. I was kind of wanting to use that for something else, but uh, I haven't started that project yet. So the project for the maple was going to be um, a marking gauge. At least that's uh, something I kind of have an itching to do. Do a maple shank on the marking gauge. And for the fence, I actually got, I've got the police coming. Now, um, got this piece of eight quarter. So, I think I could make a nice fence out of that. That might actually be a bit excessive, but uh, you know, when it's bigger wood, you can always cut down. Smaller wood, it's difficult to add to. Let's check out this edge. How square are we? I don't like how square that is. We can live with that. All right, so um, tape measure, tape measure, tape measure. I'm gonna go 36 inches. That's right here. And this is an approximate measurement. It doesn't need to be exactly 36 inches. This needs to be big enough to contain our saws. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and scribe this line all the way across. There we go. And before we put it in there, let's um, do our knife wall. And this is the main reason why I own this chisel. This is an inch and a half Buck Brothers chisel and its primary role is to uh, carve out those knife holes. But not to be sharp. So we get the strop treatment every once in a while. We don't ask a whole lot of this chisel. So we don't need to sharpen it all that often. But we still want it to be sharp. Because no matter what the purpose of your chisel, there is not a chisel that does not benefit from being sharp. Let's see if we can uh, maybe get this guy and wedge just in place. There we go. and get some added benefit from the hold fast. There we go. I'm pretty sure my neighbors think I'm pretty much nuts that I'm just talking to myself here the whole time. That's okay. None of them bother me all that much. <laughs> oh yeah. Keep forgetting, let's, uh, let's have a vertical line to work to. 
always a good idea. That seems to be holding steady a bit better. And in fact, this thing ain't moving for nothing. Well, I'm pretty sure I still could move it if I really wanted to. sufficiently attached. That's a nice clean cut. I'm pretty happy with that. Line up these edges. Nice nick in the corner right there. Move that to the side. Knife in the neck, in that cut. Come on, there we go. Square to the knife. And then transcribe it all the way across. And our newly sharpened chisel. to deepen that knife wall. Got a little triangle notch out. And the whole reason we're using the bigger chisel for this is because we don't have to make as many chops across a wide board like this, like what we would with a three quarter inch chisel. Now some might argue and I don't know who these some are, but they could exist. They are hypothetically possible people. That I would want, say, a three-quarter inch chisel because I might have more control over it. Which I say, yeah, you're probably right. But this works too. Move on down, move on down. Yeah, and here we're definitely going to need this second bit of bracing action. In fact, we're probably going to need all the action we've got. Let's grab a second hold fast. There we go, there we go. And once again, I forgot to square across the edge. Someday, someday I'll learn to be consistent about this stuff. Maybe not today. Maybe not ever. Well, that would actually be 
contradictory with the someday if, it, if not ever. That's okay. So I'm talking to myself once again. So you've all left me here alone in my workshop. It is a lovely smell. Very different from pine, very different from walnut. All right, how much wood do I have remaining after all that? All right, I've got uh, just under 36 inches remaining, which gives me enough to do the top and top or bottom, but not both. So, I'm probably going to want to do the bottom with this piece. And what do I need? I need 27 and a half inches. And uh, this whole thing, it's a saw till, it's a utilitarian project. Um, so it doesn't need to be pretty, not remotely pretty. What have I got in the way of pine? Might actually be able to get, uh, get away with that, it's a piece of tongue and groove pine. So, yeah, we might give that a try. I suppose technically I don't really need to do any joinery on this, but you know, it's half the fun, isn't it? Okay, so let's see, we're gonna do 27 and a half inches. And this one we wanna be kind of precise. There's my tape measure. <sighs> 27 and a half. 27 and a half. So this will be the bottom of our carcass. We can go a little over, don't tell anyone, right? Marking knife. I'm probably not getting a lot of great shots in here, and I apologize for that. Actually, let's uh, try and fix that somewhat. Here we go. Get a little bit closer. Just. Okay, so. Wood there, block of wood there, clampy clampy. Hold fast, my favorite clamping mechanism. And we'll go in here, get that knife hole a little bit deeper. And a little 
little bit different on this piece because the waist is on the outside where previously I'd had the waist on the inside. But because my waist is shorter than my piece I'm saving, I want to have that on the bench, the larger piece on the bench, in order to give it more uh, surface area to clamp to. At least that's what I'm telling myself today. And then let's try to remember to the edge. At least this time I did not start sawing first. But folks, do uh, feel free to chime in if you got any questions, comments, or uh, smart ass remarks, or off-color limericks. They're always welcome. There, there, there is some automatic moderation filtering going on in the chat, but uh, that's only because you kind of have to in order to stay on Twitch's good side. I do try to pay attention to chat when it, uh, when it actually works on my screen here, which is not always. I've run into a couple of occasions where the chat that uh, comes up on my screen here is uh, actually lacking from what's actually being put into chat, if that makes sense. So people will type things in chat and I won't see them on my screen, or at least that happened once. But I'm comparing and contrasting to another screen over there, which is usually a bit more reliable, so I'm fairly confident today that no one's just talking to me, so I will continue talking to myself until someone tells me to stop. And even that might not work because, you know, I don't like people telling me what to do. sawing is you cut straight across, right? And you, you follow the mark that's going straight across. And then you follow the mark down. And so you kind of just, uh, you, you, you get all the way across and then you follow the mark down on the back side, right? And once you get that 45 degree angle cut in there, you're golden. Your saw is going to be straight and you really can't screw it up after that point. I don't want to save this part. That's not going to help me do anything. All right. So what I do want to do, however, is find some kind of matching bit or piece for the top. These are too thin. Well, why don't I just go ahead and use the maple? I don't know. That would look weird. Definitely look weird. But then again, so would you be using a uh, tongue and groove pine? That'd be really, really odd. Tell you what, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to 
gonna start with the joinery here. So um, I'm gonna do some dovetails and I'm gonna do some mortise and tenons. And that should be sufficient content for today. I don't think uh, I'm gonna be able to do much more than that. And tomorrow, I'm gonna swing by the home desk pot, get myself another chunk of red oak. And so we can have a 100% matching carcass. Damn it, I just dropped my marking knife on the concrete. Oh. You hate me now, don't you? I'm sorry, marking knife. I did not mean to drop you on the concrete. Have we got any nicks in the blade? Anything in the edge? Still appear to be straight. Well, I guess we'll survive. Yeah, but we can do that. We can just uh, continue on just with what we have right now and we'll get some more uh, lumber tomorrow. And we can continue this Monday because I don't think I would have been able to finish this in the two hour stream anyway. So, do we want to do, yeah, let's do, let's do dovetails first. I think that makes the most sense. And for that, I need a handy dandy dovetail template. If you don't have one of these, you can buy one. They're cheap. Oh, oh, chat, chat, I've got, sorry, dirt plug. Good to see you, friend. Glad you could join me. So, dovetail template. If you don't have one of these, they're cheap. You can buy them for a couple bucks. Or if you want to follow my video instructions, um, you can make a piece, make one out of angle iron for more than it costs to buy one. Or you can actually, uh, you know, follow uh, the instructions of a proper woodworker, say Paul Sellers, and make one out of wood. Or you can use a bevel gauge. Those work too. So, what do I need? I need a dovetail template. I'm going to need my marking wheel. And what else do I need? What else do I need? Dovetail saw, which is over here, which will be in the saw till. And marking knife, which I'm gonna use probably this guy. All right, so tails. Force is gonna be on the bottom, so it's gonna be downward force. So I want the, the tails on the bottom board and I want the pins on the vertical boards, right? Right. Let's do it that way. But first, let's make everything nice and square. with Mr. Shooting Board, our good friend. I don't need this dowel yet. This dowel will come much later. Maybe. If, if I get that far. You can't tell folks, I'm just making this up as I go. That's generally how we do. There are occasionally rough plans to begin with. But we adapt as needed. taught me anything, it's plans rarely work out as you originally intend. So sure, make a rough plan, 
but uh, don't expect to follow it. Just, just keep it as a rough plan and adapt as needed. All right, so I'm going to have this be the front. And so this is going to be the top. I'm Chugs, waiting with a party of 15. I do not know what to do with a party of 15. So, um, there, there are no chips, there are no drinks. Uh, in fact, Hug Chugs, I'm not even sure I've, I've met you before. And, uh, okay, chat's going fast. Raid alert, raid, raid. Sup? Hello, Hug Chugs, good to have you. And who else we got? We got THP777. I got Zydrate Heaven. And I've got Bella with numbers. And how are we doing today, folks? We're uh, we're making a sawtill today. That was the that's the plan anyway. It turns out I don't have enough lumber to complete it. But uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna work with what we got and uh, get some more red oak tomorrow. And let's adjust the camera just a hair. All right, so this is our tailboard. So we're gonna take our dovetail template and mark some tails. Actually, we need to lay out the tails, don't we? If you can't tell, I'm still fairly uh, novice at woodworking. So I kind of mix stuff up as I go along, learn things here and there, make many, many mistakes along the way. Thank you for the follow of Chugs. Let's uh, see if we can turn this volume down. I don't think you all need to hear that as much as I do. And uh, for this one, I think I want three tails and three pins. So one, two, three. That looks fairly good. And one, two, three. And these aren't going to be um, attractive and thin tails like you might find on fine joinery. Extreme pottery. Okay. Uh, I am making a sawtill. Uh, Mr. Zydrate, is that what it is? And a sawtill is basically a box that I'm going to hang on the wall. So if you can see here, I'm uh, still outfitting my shop. And so I'm going to have a little box where I can hang my saws all next to each other vertically for easy access. So I don't have to stick them over here on the side and back on the back of the bench. Yeah, my, uh, my wife was actually a pottery major, so a uh, ceramics major. Um, mostly did sculpture, but uh, that, that did not last forever. All right, so dovetail, oh yeah. There was a reason I was doing this. So we're gonna mark the depth. All around. And normally I prefer the pin style marking gauges, but for uh, cross grain work like this, the wheel gauges are uh, much, much better. Sorry, I, uh, I, I use masculine pronouns as gender neutral, so in the traditional sense, so please don't be offended if I uh, get it inappropriately. I mean nothing by it whatsoever. So, uh, Uggchugs, are you still around? What sort of um, majored in fine art with a focus in ceramic sculpture? 
I make lots and lots of coffee mugs, which is a fine thing to make out of ceramics. I, I, I do find them to be a very proper employment of clay. Ceramic mugs and um, knife blades. Knife blades are great for ceramics as well. All right, so that's uh, one. And I'll leave this, uh, these dividers at that setting for the other side of the tails as well. I'm just trying to get this, uh, a really deep score in here so I can see it. I'm going to have fairly broad pins, it looks like. And I'm not trying to make these dovetails all that pretty. Because, as, as I said, this is a utilitarian piece. Uh, well, thank you very much, Ug Chucks. Thank you for the raid, and thanks for stopping by. Um, I'm going to have to check you out sometime. Uh, not uh, much of a ceramics fan myself, but, uh, you know, it's always uh, good to see people learning different skills. So, take care now. Yeah, usually when I end, up, end my stream, it's, uh, I don't like to stick around for much either. It can be pretty tiring work here in the shop, especially since I don't have any form of air conditioning other than opening the garage door. All right, so, nope, that's the crosscut saw. We want the dovetail saw. And so what I like to do here is, I'm not sure, you guys probably can't see the lines, but, uh, if you're not familiar with dovetails, let's see if I can zoom in. You're gonna do this to me again, aren't you? <sighs> Sorry, folks. Let's uh, let's do it on the computer then. Supposed to be able to remote control this on my phone, but it doesn't always work all that well. So, I did this completely wrong, didn't I? Dang it. So, um, let's, uh, let's try that again. And pretend you didn't see that. <laughs> you see some lines, yes, they are unfortunately the wrong lines. Um, <laughs> I, I, I cut them in the wrong direction. So, template, template, template. There we go. Okay, how can I salvage this and actually know what I'm looking at here? Let's do this. Let's just flip the entire piece over, okay? Those lines on this side are no longer valid lines. Now I need to move the cam again, do I? Okay. Okay, sorry. I got this remote thing that's supposed to work, except that uh, if the screen locks, then it loses connection with the computer, so yeah, that's... There we go, there we go, there's zoom, there's zoom out. Okay. Let's 
Did I get it right the first time? Wait a minute, maybe I did. Okay, let me look at this properly. So there's a tail. There's a tail. What am I looking at? Oh man, it's okay. I would say it's time for a water break, but uh, I've run out. Trying to remember. I, you know what? I think the problem is I've never done three tails before. I've always done like just two. And that's maybe messing me up a little bit here. The one. Two, three, and then one, two, three, All right? You ever just have one of those days where you, you, you know what you're doing, or at least you've done it before multiple times, and you just have this, this like brain fart where you, you, you lose all the skills you thought you knew? That's, uh, that's what's going on for me right now. Okay, so dovetails is a way to connect two boards together. Yes, um, at a 90 degree angle, generally speaking. Um, yeah, like boxes from woodshop classes look. Except I never went to woodshop class. I learned everything from the internet, which means it's all right. Because internet is better than woodshop. Okay, so let's do it with pencil. I'm going to do it with pencil, and that'll be okay. Okay, so. We're having pins on the outside, right? And we're going to have you know what let's just do Yeah. I'm gonna do it over to this side. Blame the over overwhelming raid. No, no, it's it's not the raid's fault. It's entirely my fault. I, I, I'm i supposed to know what I'm doing. It's just, uh, for some reason, brain is not connecting today. Okay, so I'm just going to start over on this side, right? So we're, we're just going to look at the other side later. And uh, hopefully, ho hopefully we can figure out what we're doing over here before we me completely mess up that side. So again, scoring a depth line because our, our, uh, our pin piece, this is our tail piece, the pins are going to be the, the mating piece. Uh, we measure the thickness of here with the wheel gauge and then mark it and we're good to go. Okay, so we want to go one, two, three, and we're just going to mark these in pencil for now. That's one, two, three. And hopefully this pencil line is going to give me a better idea of what I'm working with so I can actually visualize it a little bit better. And we're going to go one, two, three. And see, that was a problem. I couldn't actually see those before, so now I can. One. Zydrate, thank you very much for the follow. 
One, two, and three. All right, so if I do that, I'm gonna get really wide pins and really narrow tails. So what I think I want to do is maybe first thing let's get rid of some of the pencil marks. And how do we get rid of pencil marks? We shave them off. And now our death gauge is completely invalid. I did not think this through. <laughs> bits, bits, there were bits. I, I missed the bits. Oh, was that, was that a bit the thing that I got a notification? I thought I got a follow notification. Am I completely losing my mind? I got follow. And I got a hundred bits. Well, thank you very much for both. Sorry, still new to this thing, especially the uh, the affiliate perks with the bits. So that's uh, you were actually my first bit cheer. So thank you very much. Congratulations on that. Bits and follow, like shaving a haircut, only different. And uh, the strange thing that. Uh, I've, I've learned about the affiliate, whatchamacallits, the, uh, the potential for revenue with uh, subscriptions and bits, is you actually have to pass a certain threshold. And, ooh. Maybe I need it to be narrower. Okay, so one, two, three. You know what, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I am just going to eyeball this, right? And I'm not going to care if it's symmetrical because that seems to be what's messing me up the most. Okay, so pin on the side, pin on the side. Actually, let's uh, let's make this one a bit wider. And somewhere in the middle, we're going to have another pin. It's going to be about yay wide. And so that's my tail. And that's my tail, and we'll cut out that now on this side. So, if we can see, let's uh, maybe zoom in and just. So, we're going to have a tail, a tail, and we're going to cut out that and cut out that. All right? All right, that's the plan. Go get food, try and watch on mobile. All right, uh, do what you can do. And I will not be in the least bit offended if you don't talk to me anymore. Because uh, we've all been there. And we're gonna go here. Actually, let's make that a bit bigger. There, there. And we're gonna move this one in a bit. So there, there. Now, generally speaking, when we do woodworking, when we're when we're trying to get really nice, clean lines, we use the marking knife, right? Because it gets a really exact line. But uh, the pencil, you know, it's it's actually quite a bit uh, less of a fine point on the pencil than you would get with um, a marking knife. So. We try to avoid the pencil when possible.
But in this application, because I don't really need to be all that exact, because again, once again, this is, um, this is shop furniture, so we don't care how pretty it is. And we don't need it to match exactly with anything else because we're going to base the pins off the, uh, off the recesses that we we're cutting right now. So, once we cut these, for the pin boards, we're actually going to measure it off of the tails. So, um, I've kind of skewed the board a little bit, and actually it's a little too much. So that uh, when I cut these, I'm actually orienting the saw vertically. And I find that helps me out a little bit to uh, just keep track of everything. Because I'm more accustomed to cutting with the saw vertical. And then follow across. And this this saw cuts really, really well. I'm very pleased with it. I love this Veritas saw, these Veritas saws. They're really nice. I recommend them if you're at all ever in the market for a, a fine woodworking joinery saw. <laughs> actually going to spend very much time making this stuff uh, look pretty and line up. So if, if the joints have gaps, so be it. still in frame. Someone yell at me if you can't see. So there is a lot of debate as to what angle you want to use with your uh, dovetails to, to make them strongest. I really don't care all that much, but I go with a, uh, a one and eight pitch, if anyone is concerned. And that is an awful, awful, terrible cut. So I don't go, didn't go uh, straight across like I was planning to, so it's kind of skewed at an angle. I'm going to have to probably fix that a little bit. That's okay. That's why we have chisels. Chisels can do just about anything. You still in frame? Looks okay. Got some near planes going by. What are you guys doing? No clue, just out for a joyride, it looks like. Sometimes we get some, uh, what appears to be 
historical planes being flown around like old bombers from World War II. Not that I would be able to recognize which war the bombers were from. They just look like what I imagine World War II bombers to look like. And what I often see is uh, actually gliders being towed up into the air. So evidently there's uh, there's some glider action that's popular in these parts. All right. And we're seeing some more of my limitations manifest right there. Okay, so let's uh, see if we can get this in frame. Maybe a little bit better. Now I've got my pins properly marked and I've got uh, the tails cut, so that's too big. That's way too big. I've got some more chisels, don't I? How about you? Five eighths, I choose you. But first, we can cut the sides off here. And I've already got a nice little mark. And so I'll just take a random chisel and make that a uh, bit of a deeper knife wall. It might be more appropriate to use a crosscut saw for this, but uh, for some reason, whenever I'm cutting dovetails, I only like to use my dovetail saw. And if you're not familiar with the way uh, the saws work, so we have grain running back and forth this direction, right? So if we were cutting this direction with the grain, we're going to use a rip style saw. But if we're cutting across, this is cross grain, we'd use a cross cut saw. And they're just better suited for that. But you can do either with either. The way I look at it, cross cut saws are slightly better at cutting across the grain. But rip saws are well suited, well enough suited for any task. So if you're only going to have one saw, it should probably be a rip saw. This middle bit, what we're going to do is make a nice score across the base of it. And we don't want to go too far because that will crush the grain just, just, just enough. Then we're going to move away from it just a little bit and then we're going to get a nice, uh, go quite a bit deeper. Then we'll move forward. And the wedging action of the bezel is going to kind of push the push the edge into the uh, into where we're cutting. If that makes any sense whatsoever, it probably doesn't. Huh? Sometimes it's difficult to explain things while you're doing them, especially if you're a novice like me. Let's go back in your back in your groove there. Chop down just a little bit further, all the way across. Then come out and take a nice little wedge.
but we love seeing you do this. Well, I, I hope you can see it. It's uh, it's kind of difficult to, to wrangle the camera as as well as as keep track of my chisel. And unfortunately, the camera is not going to uh, potentially cause loss of life or limb. So um, chisel wins out on that fight. I've only been to the ER once due to a chisel cut. I'd like to keep it that way if possible. Didn't have stitches that time. I just had uh, super glue. If you look at the uh, the center right of my screen, you might see some of my uh, prior photographs, and amongst them is my finger glued shut because uh, I decided I wanted to let some of the blood out. And the doctor at the ER thought the best advice he could give me was not have to have so such sharp chisels. Which just goes to show you doctors don't know everything. You most certainly want sharp chisels, especially if you end up cutting yourself. Because a dull, dull chisel will tear the flesh, or a sharp chisel will just slice right through it. So it's going to give you a cleaner cut, and you're also much less likely to slip with a sharp chisel. So you're less likely to injure yourself in the first place. All right, it's approximately halfway through, and so we want to make sure that there's still a piece that's. Uh, um, from here to here that we haven't cut through and that's to give us support so when we flip it over it's still supported on that end. Now there's, there's different ways of doing this. Some guys like to use a coping saw to get rid of this stuff to get rid of the, the middle bit. But chisels are, seem to be the most popular option. And we're just going a little bit away from the line to avoid crushing fibers. And with the bevel still pointed the same way, a little bit further, we'll take out a small wedge. That wedge will grow. Back of the line. Drop down a little bit further. And a little bit further out. Just manage your waist. Try and flick it out of the way when you can. And if anybody's thinking of following me for uh, learning how to do woodworking, good luck because I am not a very well qualified instructor. There are many people with much more experience than I have who are better qualified to teach you this stuff. I mean, you could probably learn a little from me if you know very little at all, but I, I would, uh, if you're wanting to learn woodworking, Paul Sellers, James Wright, Rob Cosman, those are all good folks. And if you're more of a power tool guy, Steve Ramsey. Well, I, I do, I have a couple of quasi-instructional videos. So I had a video for the dovetail template. I've got a video for um, my mallet. That's a, that's a fun one. This is a ridiculously large mallet. Let's zoom out. So this is maple and walnut. The removable handle. Then 
Now the problem is editing videos takes a really, really long time. And um, I've, I've got other things to do, unfortunately. I mean, I am a, I, I'm, I'm a full-time student, so I just started college again at 38 years old. Because I thought that would be really fun. Hanging around a bunch with a bunch of kids and I'm old enough to be their father. Well, I'm older than most of my professors. So that's that's a lot of fun right there. And we're through. And left a nice gouge in the bench top, but that's okay, because it's a bench top, it's a tool. And it's not permanent. Okay, so we got one of the tail, two of the tails cut out. Still love the mallet. You know, the mallet unfortunately is a bit too big. I didn't quite think it through all that well. But it certainly does the trick, and we're going to zoom out a little bit and get these, uh, get these corners out. But you know, it was fun to make, and it does come in handy occasionally. So I like to use that one um, when making dowels. Uh, it's great for dowel making, because it's just got a lot of mass. And it, it, it just, uh, a lot of weight behind it. A lot of force behind it and when you're doing dowels um, the surface area big big surface area that you're hitting the dowel with um, makes it less likely to catch a corner if you will so it's more likely to hit straight on so even if you're a little bit off center it's still gonna hit straight on um, so yeah it's, uh, I do, do, do definitely like it for the dowel making. All right, and we'll just cut this guy down. confident that the next bench I'm gonna make you're, you're always got to be planning for your next bench so this this bench took me about three months to build actually but you know I was working full-time when I was building it as well which I don't have to worry about anymore I'm retired from that job But this is my second woodworking bench. My first one was I had some uh, 2 by 12s edge jointed before they were dry, which was a mistake. And I basically assembled it uh, using butt joints and screws and joist hangers and yeah, more or less I was doing it as if I was doing like a building construction. And it worked. Didn't even have a vise at first, added that as an afterthought. Had a big uh, kind of overhanging hutch with a pegboard to hold tools. And that was a mistake because, you know, if you're planing or sawing on, on the bench, then it's uh, just going to shake and rattle all your tools off. So yeah, um, if you're building a workbench, don't attach anything above it like as a backing. That's a mistake. If you're gonna have something like that's gonna be a wall hanger, actually hang it on the wall and don't attach your bench to it. Your bench should be freestanding and your tool holders should be freestanding. That's okay. And so yeah, this is uh, bench number two, which is laminated two by fours as a bench top, and I've got laminated two by sixes on the legs, and also more laminated two by fours uh, on the back, and I've got two by four stretchers and laminated two by four stretchers, so yeah. All construction lumber still. 
this time with proper joinery. But the next one I'm thinking maple. Really nice, big, heavy surface. And a bit bigger. Thinking of adding another foot of length and maybe another foot of depth. So I can get a lot more, more uh, space to hold tools because that's, uh, that's a big problem I'm running into. Maybe a proper tool well. Still not entirely convinced by the tool wells. So a tool well, if anybody doesn't know, is uh, imagine if I had like a, a four inch dip in here and so everything could be held in a little pocket underneath the, the, the surface of the bench. So like if I put my chisel in there and I could plane across and I wouldn't hit the chisel, if that makes sense. So that's that's the tool well, and they're very very popular. I'm just not convinced yet. It's just one of those uh, one of those things. You you kind of you kind of have to try it to know if you like it. And I have never tried it. Although I have this um, little tool tray in the back here. You can see it. So this uh, it's about a half inch gap. And I can just drop in a chisel, I can drop in a saw, so here's my saws, screwdrivers, and that definitely comes in handy, but those tools also get in the way. So I, I use it all the time, but they always get in the way. And uh, actually one of the reasons I, I use it so much is because I don't have any other place to put my saws, hence making a saw tilt. So yeah, I moved, uh, we moved here in February. And so I'm just taking my time getting the shop set up. That's why, uh, if you've seen the wall behind me, they got the French cleats. Yeah. Sticking out above the surface, not desirable, but uh, definitely functional. It, it's, it's a great place to store stuff, it's just they, it gets in the way. But yeah, I moved here in February and uh, so we got French cleats on the wall and it's the first time I've, I've tried a French cleat storage system. But it's not, not complete yet, so I don't have space for all my tools yet. But I'm just uh, slowly, slowly getting my shop organized. And yeah. By the time it's done, I might be looking at building a new shop. So this is a, a garage right now, so just a repurposed garage. And it would be nice, you know, to put cars in here. Because we do get rain and snow sometimes. Not much, but you know. When you have snow, it's still nice to have your car in a garage. And I would just like a, something a bit more purpose-built to do woodworking in. You know, some place with maybe windows so I can see outside without having to open the garage door and be attacked by all the insects. Maybe some air conditioning so I'm not uh, getting heat stroke in the middle of the day when I'm out here working and streaming. <laughs> oh, that would be nice. But you know, these things cost money. And while I'm doing alright, doesn't mean you, you, you spend frivolously, right? That's how you get to be doing all right, by not spending frivolously. The 
But uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I'm starting school, or why I, why I have started school, is I've got this this wonderful uh, education benefit, where they actually pay me to go to school. Air conditioning, yes, air conditioning is one of the finest inventions of mankind. Refrigeration in general. We would not be able to s sustain even a portion of our current population were it not for refrigeration. Especially where I used to live in Arizona. That place is just brutal. There's a reason people only come there in the winter. You ever heard of a snowbird? There is a, uh, a transient population in, in Arizona. They only show up in the winter months. They come from places like Minnesota and Canada. A lot of Canadians in Arizona during the winter months. And really, would you want to live in Canada in the winter? You had a choice? Getting near midnight on this side of the big pond. Well, that seems like a very late time. And that's still a dirt plug, okay. The uh the chat I've got here makes it really, really hard to read names for some reason. So I'm I'm, I'm wanting to come up with a better solution. Um, but I just am not there yet. And I am not offended if you leave, Dirk. It was always good to have you. Maybe I'll catch you some other time. And this waist is uh, getting a bit narrow, so I might actually have to grab a narrower chisel. That's okay. This is why we have chisels in different sizes. Well, one of many reasons why we have chisels in different sizes. Are you streaming again starting next week? Uh, I think I'm following you, Dirk. Um, I just, uh, I, I don't have that much time to uh, be watching streams anymore, and I th think you might be at a, a weird time for me. But I will certainly try and catch you if I ever see you on. I do feel bad sometimes that uh, all these folks who come watch my streams and I never have time to watch theirs. But uh, being so far removed from, from, from an academic environment and just starting college, it is really kicking my butt. Time is at my side. That's a, that's a fine question. I don't even know. I've got almost 5 o'clock, 5 p.m., 1700. If you're one of those folks who does 24-hour time. But I start, uh, I start my stream at 3 o'clock central time. Is what we call it here. And we are through on that one as well. All right, so now we didn't get all the way down to the line, so we're gonna have to clean that up again with a chisel. And for this, you always want to cut from the outside in. You never wanna cut all the way through to the other end. So maybe we can zoom in a little bit. So, that's probably not a perfect picture, but we're going to start from this side, work our way towards the middle, and then we're going to approach this side from here, and we're not going to go all the way through, because that can cause tear out of the grain. Normally start 
at 2,000 CET, which would be about three or 1,300 my time. And unfortunately, 1,300 is generally not a good time for me. Um, except on Fridays. Fridays might work, or you know, Tuesdays and let's see, I got class Tuesday morning and Tuesday, Tuesday and Thursday morning and about two o'clock, 2.40 that afternoon. So yeah, I might be able to catch you a little bit. I'll, 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 uh, I'll try and keep that in mind. You stream on weekends at all? Keeping my weekends for uh, for doing for class projects and and studying and homework. It's amazing how much you will forget about algebra in twenty years. So, kids. Uh, might be doing Lego events streams weekends, but when I visit or work on them. Okay. But yeah, kids, uh, if you, uh, if your teachers are telling you that you will need algebra in the future, in real life, they're probably lying. At least, uh, at least for most of it. Yes, you will need to understand how variables work. Variables are very important. Boolean logic is kind of important too. If you're uh, if you're ever going to be working with uh, spreadsheets or databases, but I have yet to see a real world world application for the quadratic formula. Did a few band rehearsals at Sunday afternoon. Ooh, fun! What do you play? What uh, what style and or instruments? I am a former professional musician. I was a, a front man for a blues and rock band. Classic rock, southern rock. But that was in another lifetime. Before I decided that I liked to eat. Eating is a very powerful motivation. And while I discovered I play bass guitar and I sing, all fine, fine occupations, unless you're in California. In California, you can't throw a rock without hitting a bass player. I blame, uh, you Stones, Beatles, Doobie Brothers, Clapton. Okay. All good stuff. We did quite a bit of uh, Leonard Skinner, Georgia Satellites. Thirty-three years. That's uh, that's some dedication right there. Okay. Let's let's uh let's get this one. Yeah, I was with my old band for a couple of years. Don't remember exactly how long. Um, they're doing a lot better without me. Well, not necessarily without me, but they they've been doing a lot better since I left, which also doesn't sound very pro uh self-congratulatory, but they, they, they have recovered from my loss, okay? From losing me, I will say. And they're doing more originals now. But yeah, oh man, that's that's great fun. There's there's nothing like uh, getting on stage and, and rocking the house, even no matter how small the house. When you get an audience that's into it and the band's grooving, you're actually playing correctly. 
It's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. Quite addictive too. Even if you're only making two dollars an hour. Which in today's dollars would be about three dollars. Introduce Jupe to YouTube and he went a bit crazy. We have 500 clips online within a few years. Yeah. Well, YouTube's a, a bit of a tricky mistress because you kind of, well, I guess they do have the live streaming now, but YouTube is not a great place for live streaming. The, the market is not geared towards live streaming like Twitch is. And there's a lot more woodworkers on YouTube, which means the market's saturated, which is why I'm on Twitch. I've had a YouTube account since like uh, 2004, and I think I've got something like 60 subscribers. Been on Twitch for just a couple of months. Already at 55 followers. So yeah, Twitch is a, a bit more of a, I, th I think you've got a bit more opportunity on Twitch. That's why I'm here anyway. Still have my YouTube account. It's just uh, I don't I don't post very often because editing videos is absolutely hell. Jupe is pronounced like joke. Okay. If you'd like to uh, leave a link, I think I have links enabled. I'd be more than willing to take a look at it after uh, after I'm done streaming here. I am quite honestly very bad at adjusting my switch settings, so well I think I might I have enabled links, I can't be entirely certain, so I may be lying to you. People are more dedicated on Twitch. Uh, I don't know if I would say that. Because I've seen the work that goes into producing videos on YouTube. And yeah, it's that's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. That I don't really want to do. And Twitch being the live format is is a lot easier for me to uh, to get set up and takes a lot less time. So you know, I go and I come into my shop, I set up my computer, I turn it on, and you know, it takes me about 10-15 minutes. Oh, dedication of the followers. I can neither confirm nor deny that assessment. So, uh, okay, we'll just uh, we'll go with that. I, I, I will not argue that point. So I'm unqualified. All right, so we got our tails, and they're not set in stone because they're made out of wood. Um, and we may end up having to further manipulate them as time goes by. But they are good enough now. Followers tend to come back more often on YouTube. Okay. Set those aside. Uh, shouldn't need my template anymore, so I'll put that away. And I'm trying to get stuff, so I got uh, all that stuff back here, and I don't need it. So I'm, I'm looking for other homes because it's in my way right now. 
And I don't actually have a permanent home for my bevel gauge either. All right, well, thank you very much for stopping by and st come back anytime. And I'll, uh, I'll try to trek you out uh, maybe, maybe Tuesday. Tuesday would be a good day for me to check you out. See you later, Dirk. So now that all that's out of the way. One of these is the front, one of these is the bottom, or the top one is the bottom. This is the one I messed up, so this is going to be the top, which means it goes X-Ray, I did not know you were here. Good to see you again. Shop cleaning is a very, very important task. Okay, can we see this? So anyway, what I've got here is I've got the, the, pin for, the board for the pins. So this is gonna be the upright. And I'm putting the tails on top of it. And I'm just going to directly mark the pins from the tails. And this knife has got two bevels on it, or a bevel on each side, so I can keep the, uh, the back of it up against each pin. Now let's see if we can get my arm out of the way, maybe. Zoom in. And so I got the back of the blade up against the tail. And you don't want the bevel up against there because, well, then it would be away from the away from the tail, right? This way we just get it nice and flat. And we got nice crisp lines. Get our pencil, show you. Right there, 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 and there. And what we're going to do here is these are what we're going to keep, these pins. So we'll just mark that, X, 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 so we know that's what we're cutting out, right? And just so we are ever so clear about what is what, Zoom out. This is going to be joint A. All right, and that's the inside. And this will also be joint A. Okay, so we don't want to forget what's what. And this marking gauge, this wheel gauge, should still be set to the appropriate thickness, which it is. So we'll just score across to let us know where to stop cutting. And we're not going to score the sides because we're not cutting the sides because the sides are staying, the pins are staying on the sides. And I'm sure I could say that about five other ways and it still wouldn't make any more sense to you, but that's okay. That's A. Okay, well, let's flip this over. We're going to set A aside. And we're going to get board B. So let's just go ahead and mark this B. And this is the inside, so we'll mark this B. And we're going to get close to the surface, but not quite at the surface, right? So we just want a little bit of overhang, if you could call it that. Now there's a bunch of different tricks and whatnot. Some people actually like to 
shave this down like with a shoulder plane just to make this uh, give it a little lip here. I don't do that, but it's, it's certainly a way of doing things. Just try and get it lined up as best you can. We're never really looking for absolute perfection, but we want to get close enough. So again, back of the marking knife on the tail. Just score down into it. And we're using the knife, not the pencil, because we want to get as precise as possible so we can have a really nice tight fitting joint. And again, we'll mark these just so we can see them better. We still want to cut based upon the lines, but the, the pencil line so the knife line is what we're going to use to base our cuts off of. But the pencil lines will make it easier to see the knife lines, if that makes sense to you. So we can say, oh look, there's a pencil line, there's a knife line in there somewhere. And there we go. And the next thing I'm gonna do is get my square involved. Give me a nice vertical line to cut to. And these aren't the prettiest lines, obviously. I could take more care for this. I am trying to get this done, or at least closer to done. All right, now that we've got that, this is uh, joint B. So, Dovetail saw once again. And so we've got this line here, and I don't want to cut straight down the middle of the line. I want to cut on the waist side of the line. So this is waist, that's waist. So I want to cut on the waist side of the line. But very, very close, so I don't have to do too much work for it. Too much work fitting it later. And saws wander just a little bit. And again, if I was really particular about cutting these pretty, I wouldn't want to go over the line on the back. So, what I might do there is bring out a mirror, and I've got one somewhere in the shop. I don't remember where, so we're just going to uh, not care if it goes over the line. And you kind of got a, a double-edged sword here where you want the joint to be tight because the tighter it is, the better it's going to hold and the better it's going to look. But you don't want it to be too tight because one, it won't fit if it's way too tight. And if it's if it's tight enough where you can fit it by forcing it, then you run the risk of of actually splitting your work, especially on these tail pieces. So imagine if if you're fitting these tails into the pins and it's just a little bit too big, you're putting a little bit of pressure on this side, a little bit too much pressure, a little bit too much pressure, and it just splits because the grain is oriented this way, and it'll just go all the way down. And you can fix it with some glue and some patience, 
but it's never going to look exactly right. Especially if you're standing. Because stain and glue just do not mix. Kind of like pig and elephant DNA. All right, how close am I to the line? I am just a little bit over, but that's okay. I'm like not even maybe a 64th of an inch over when I am over. So, yeah. And that's the benefit of practice, as you start gaining skills. Now, a lot of folks in the woodworking community, or even in the maker community, is what they call it. I, I'm not a big fan of those terms. I'm not part of a community. I'm a guy who makes things out of wood. But it's not about it's not about making stuff. Making stuff is nice. It's good to make stuff, right? Good to make stuff because then you can have stuff and stuff that you like and stuff the way you want it and stuff that no one else has because no one else is making it, right? No one is making exactly what you want. And that's great. That's great. But more important than that is this gives you an opportunity to develop a skill. And I need some vertical lines on here to follow. And that's what I'm all about, all right? I'm all about developing a skill. It doesn't matter what skill it is. Right? Gain a skill making things out of wood, that's fine. Gain a skill writing computer software, also great. Just gain a skill. Learn something new. Become better than you were yesterday. Become a better person than you were yesterday. Become more knowledgeable than you were. I'm not sure what I've learned today, but if nothing else, I've gained some practice. Which, if there's practice, there's learning. Okay. And that's enough of that soapbox. If you stick around, you'll probably hear it again. anything too terribly important today. Yesterday I learned how to do four loops in C, which I think will be a very, very valuable skill in the future. Not that there's anything you can do with for loops that you can't do with while loops, but for loops do, do tend to make things a bit uh, cleaner. And the code is prettier. Someday, if I get into any actual skill in coding, I may end up doing some uh, live streams with it. And one of the main goals with my education is to uh, contribute to open source projects that I've used, like uh, Mangler and OpenShot.
Okay, so... I'm not sure how I want to approach these. So, um, these are quite wide tails. So, I think rather than chiseling these out... I don't know. I want to... Let's do one with the coping saw, see how that goes. And if it doesn't work out, we'll chisel the other one. Sound fair? Everybody approve? Okay. Try and get the coping saw. Nice and tight. Not sure if I'm due for another blade yet. And unfortunately here we have to stay quite a bit far away from the line. Be very careful about the about the saw being level, so that we don't uh, we don't dip below the line on the far side. Because we can see the line on my side, can't see it through the wood because wood is not transparent. <laughs> Which is an important thing to know. If you thought wood was transparent, you might uh, be in for some surprises. <laughs> might actually be a good application for the mirror, which I don't know where it is. And for this too, we kind of have to watch because we're starting at this angle and ending up at this angle, so we kind of have to rotate the saw as we're going through. Go ahead and back out. And rotate this about to there. So coping saw, you can change the angle at which the, the blade is situated. So now we can start here. And the arm is out of the way, so it's not running into this. But you also have the uh, propensity for the blade to kind of twist, which makes it not a useful blade. So you have to watch that as well. <laughs> and most of the time you see coping saws, you have them so they cut on the pull stroke, whereas this one I have cut set up to cut on the push stroke. And I do that for, mostly for familiarity with uh, when I'm cutting joinery. I want all my saws to go the same direction. Japanese woodworking, you typically go with a pull saw and the planes are, um, they're pull planes. So like with a English European style plane, you're going to cut on the push stroke. Whereas with the Japanese plane, you pull it towards you. Everything's pulled towards you. And some people swear by one or the other. I'm not so particular myself. It's just I've picked one and I've stuck with it. So yeah. One inch chisel, I don't know how sharp you are. But that's okay. Because we have chromium oxide suspended in wax. Somewhere. Somewhere in this shop I have chromium oxide suspended in wax. Oh, a nice bit of uh, what I imagine is deer hide. You can never be certain because it wasn't a random bag of scraps, so 
Kind of looks like deer hide. Doesn't matter too much, I don't suppose. Not feeling a burr yet. Not all the way across yet. So when you're doing this, you're kind of rolling the metal while you're, you're in some ways filing the metal down on one side but that rolls it over into a really sharp burr on the other side, on the flat side. So when we feel that all the way across, we know that it's sharp or polished all the way across. And just take it off and we're all set, nice and sharp. And this should cut through very cleanly. And I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this. Maybe if now let's uh let's take the tripod down some maybe. Sorry if this is causing motion sickness. It wasn't my intention. So. We get a nice contrast. So this is where it was sawn, and this is where it was chiseled. And the chisel's really, really sharp. And we're just uh, taking nice little shavings off. In fact, let's get a hold fast in here to keep this from moving around too much. Sorry about the noise. Hopefully the compressor adjusted that for you to make it softer. I don't get too many complaints about the noise, so I'm just going to have to assume it all works. here and we're going to end up with a bit of a ridge in the middle so we're cutting kind of at an angle so like we're cutting forwards from the workpiece and so it's going to end up higher kind of in the middle and then we're going to turn this over so just flip it like that And we've got a little bit more to work with here. So, gotta watch out for the pins because they're kind of at a weird angle. Which is exactly how they were designed, so it's not too weird. But it can be a bit awkward for cutting like this. Stop moving it. And I'm pretty sure my face cam is just about useless right now. I gotta be hunched over to see what I'm doing. But we want to take really light cuts. Because if we get too aggressive, it'll it'll start to, it'll start tearing the wood, and that's not good for anybody. And 
and more or less I'm just trying to get this started and get it down to the line. I, I fully intend to have that ridge in the middle, but uh, I'm going to put this in the vise, take out the middle. I should have a bit more control that way. And I'm putting a nice uh, bunch of cuts in my bench top as well. I figure the more cuts I put in my bench top, the, uh, the faster I'll be forced to replace it. So I'm not deliberately damaging my bench, I'm just, you know, negligently damaging it. I don't want to deliberately damage it, damage it because, well, I can't afford that much maple yet. And can we still see? Maybe if we move this way. There we go. That's a nice shot, I think. And so. Shave off a little bit here, a little bit there, until it feels like it's flat across. And actually, it's okay if it's low in the middle. We just don't want it to be high in the middle. It doesn't need to be completely flat across. So if it's if it's low in the middle, that's fine. The joint will still fit, and no one will see it because it'll be covered by the tails. Control with light taps with the hammer. And so far, this chisel hammer is probably the best thing I've found for doing this kind of work. And it's just a cheap little thing, get it Home Depot. But it works great. So, no complaints at all. That big mallet I've got, yeah, it would work. But it's just not really all that manageable for stuff like this. And again, we're not going all the way through. Stop before we hit the other side, and we'll just flip it around and uh, attach it, attack it from the other way. And so, just to illustrate, we could go like like this. It's not really ideal to do it from this direction, or from from away from me, like leaning over to do this, but it might. Uh, I think it illustrates it better for your purpose, for your point of view. And I know how to talk, really I do. But concentrating on your chisels so you don't end up cutting into your fingers while talking is not, uh, not really the easiest thing in the world, believe it or not. Biting off a bit more than I can chew there. Kind of angle it upwards. So just kind of angle it just a little bit up, just to make it easier. Cutting it 
cutting off thin pieces is a lot easier than cutting off thick pieces. And do be careful as well not to grit your teeth. Work like this can make you prone to that sort of behavior. That's not good for you. And you can generally see the high spots, but you shouldn't necessarily trust your eye. Not 100% anyway. trust those the side of the chisel because that's usually pretty flat. So if your chisel across here is, is rocking back and forth, yeah, you know there's a high spot. We can also go bevel down so like this pin is in the way so I can just flip it over and put the bevel down that's that's fine too it's a lot of ways to work with the chisel got a lot of waste right here that needs to come out And you just play with it and play with it until it looks good, and then you test it. And this chisel is getting actually quite warm. This oak is not easy to cut, it's a lot of friction. Makes a lot of heat. Generally speaking, when you're doing hand tool work, you're not going to build up any significant amount of heat, but the tools definitely get warm. But it's nothing that's going to like ruin your temper or anything like that. It's not going to. It's not going to be enough heat to damage the tools or burn you or anything like that or burn the wood. Which is a distinct advantage over power tools. Pretty much every time I've tried to cut maple with my table saw, the maple ends up burnt. And oh yes, in case anybody was wondering, I do cheat from time to time and use the table saw. And someday, I'm going to buy a band saw and I'm going to use that too. But for uh, stuff like this, for joinery, hand tools. There's no reason not to use hand tools for joinery. Or at least for dovetails.
And definitely don't take me as an example of a skilled woodworker. A skilled woodworker would have been done with it, with this by now. I take my time. And I enjoy doing it. Even if sometimes I mess up the measurements at the beginning. One day, one day I'll learn how to do dovetails with more than two tails. All right, this is A. I'm gonna go ahead and try a test fit just to see what we're looking. Have to run, and who is this? Uh, who am I talking to? X-Ray. Good to have you get back again, X-Ray, and glad to see you, and I hope your shop is cleaner. And what we can see is mating A to A is we are not clear. So, but we can see where we need to, actually, let's do this, let's do this. Um, let's shave down the leading faces, get a little chamfer there. That probably won't help enough. All right, so what I'm going to do here is take my pencil and I want to shave down these pins just a little bit. And I think it's mostly going to be these two outside pins. Gonna take a little bit of material off these. And see if it fits then. Don't think I need to take any off the middle pin yet. assemble some fuzzy bits left over those are never helpful okay this is working with light tapping I don't want to tap any harder than this. If it's if I have to tap harder than this, it's too tight and it's going to snap. And that, my dear viewers, is a dovetail joint. Or at least uh, my interpretation thereof. And it'll work. This will hold pretty damn tight. Um, it'll hold tighter when I get some glue in there. And I do have a little bit of work, so it looks like I can maybe shave down, uh, clean up the bottom here so it fits a bit more flush. It looks like I got some uh, some protrusions there. But that's, uh, that's a pretty good start, I would say. And unfortunately, let's go ahead and put this back to full height. I am... 
eating up my allotted internet usage. Um, I am not the only one in this household that needs to internet at the moment. So I've actually probably gone over the, the two hours that I'm supposed to have. What time is it? Anybody? What time is it? It's a quarter to six. So yeah, I was supposed to quit about 45 minutes ago. But um, I do appreciate each and every one of you signing in and checking me out. And uh, especially those who, uh, who kept me company because it gets really, 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 really lonely here sometimes. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you too. Zydrate Heaven and Ugg Chugs and anyone else who I forgot, Dirk Plug, thank you for stopping by. And X Ray, always good to have you. If uh, you want to see more of these, um, I am, I am, my streaming schedule is Monday and Friday at 3 p.m., that's 1500 Central Time. Um, Otherwise, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. I put a lot of stuff on Instagram. Uh, YouTube. Um, when I do short form instructional videos sort of things, I put them on YouTube as well. Uh, da -da -da. What else? I'm on Facebook too. Don't really do anything except post cross post to Instagram and Twitter. But yeah, follow me on all the inter internets. Links are below. And if you haven't already, follow me here. Uh, love to see you again. Uh, that's, that's about it. Um, and remember, no matter where you go, there you are. And I'm going to look for someone else to raid because there's a lot of people here and uh, I'm going to make you someone else's problem. So give me just a minute. I'm going to put you on an AFK screen and see who else is streaming.
Well, shit. Apparently my microphone did die. For how long the hell did that happen? As usual, I'm here just talking to myself. <laughs> well, wow, shit. Welcome, Daddy War Crimes, and thank you for the raid there. I did the whole welcome speech and nobody heard me. <laughs> Yeah. 